Hi, everyone. Well, there's no one here yet, but hopefully someone will show up. Today, I am playing around with some uh, with an idea that I had about trying to use aluminum cans to make some small size books that are shaped like houses. The covers are shaped like houses. So the things that I'm using are, this is a aluminum can that's been cut up. I'm using some embossing, uh, embossing stamp pad, some embossing powders, a pair of pliers, a heat gun. Um, I've tried a few different things to see how they work. And um, I'm just gonna be playing around and see how this goes. If it works the way I want it to, then I will make a little book out of the um, pieces. Hi, Ann. Thanks for coming. I didn't really um, advertise. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to try to make some little book covers out of aluminum cans using embossing powders and whatever else I come up with along the way. So this is this is strictly experimental. So we'll see what happens. You know how that goes. So I have a few that I already cut out. And what I did was I just had an aluminum can. I um, trimmed off the tops and the bottom so that I had a flat piece. Then I drew out some lines, um, cut them out with a pair of scissors. Tim Holtz uh, scissors work, real, the serrated ones work really well because it the it makes the edge so it's not quite as sharp and they cut really easily so that's what i used on these um i used the scissors to cut the holes out i um i used a small metal punch to punch the little holes for the jump rings i also punched a hole in the middle of each opening that i wanted to have the windows and the door and then i used my small scissors to trim out the insides and to trim the top so it looked like a little house. So that's how I got to this point. And I just use a magic marker, uh, not a magic marker, a Sharpie to draw the little windows and stuff. And I wasn't worried about them being exactly perfect. They're little, just slightly wonky. And that's kind of what I wanted. Okay, so that's how I got to this point. And I made little sets of them. This is all from one. Um, actually, it wasn't a soda can. It was a beer can because they're bigger. So that's what I used. So this was all from one piece um, of can that I had. So I tried different things when I was um, working on it. I did two, Ann. And I want it to look like enamel, like it's a piece of metal that's that's been enameled. So I, I don't mind if it's a little bumpy, but I do want it to be kind of thick. And I was hoping that, that by putting the embossing powder on there that the edges wouldn't be quite as sharp too. So if you need to, and I did, um, where are they? I have some things over here that are hiding. Here they are. If you need to uh, sand the edges because they're just a little bit too sharp, you can do that with um, just an emery board, or you can use a fine sandpaper. You need a fine sandpaper. And I just put it, I just hold it in my pliers like this. So a little bit of the edge sticks up, and that keeps it from being quite as wonky, you know, because it's thin. You don't want to bend it up. And then you can just, on the straight edge, don't do it sideways, because that'll cause it to have a cut edge, a sharp edge. So you want to dull that edge down. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just rubbing that across there to dull the edge down. And then check to see, make sure, I mean, you, you don't want to rub your hand across there because it'll still cut you. It can still cut you. But it's a lot, it's it's a lot smoother. And I just, you know, you can just do that all the way around and um, as much as you need to on the points. And that will keep it from being quite so sharp. 
And sometimes it's you can get little burrs on the edge when you're cutting it with the scissors. And that just comes from like if you're cutting and then you stop and you start again, you stop, you start again. It's not a smooth cut. Just like on a piece of paper, it won't be a smooth cut. So sometimes you'll have little burrs sticking up or little um, tiny little pieces of metal sticking up. So you need to be careful, you know, with what you're doing. And um, just take your time and when you touch it, touch it carefully. You know, don't rub your hand across it because, like I said, it'll cut you. So I just kind of go around on the edge and finish with flat, uh, going um, with the file flat across it. And that, you know, does it. You can do the same thing on the inside. Take something a little smaller and, you know, just kind of smooth it out. So I did I did a couple of those with the um, file, and this one has a few little pieces sticking up of the embossing stuff. So I'm just going to knock that off too, so it feels smoother. And I cut these last two ones out, these two out, just to use as um, trials. So you know you can make it smoother if it if you think it's too sharp, you can make it smoother. And then um, where the holes are poked, it leaves a little bit of a, um, I forgot what you call those things that hang in there, the little, where the, the little part that's punched out, sometimes it'll hang on. And sometimes you'll have a little, I'm gonna say burr on the edge of the hole. So I just take my pliers and smush them down. Same thing with the other cutout parts, just so there's nothing sticking up just makes it flat. You can do it with the pliers. You can do it with, I was using using my awl and just smashing it down. And um, you can also make these holes with an awl. You just need to put it on something that has a little bit of stability and then you can just carefully poke it through there. And that works too. So this is thin. It's real easy to work work with and you can use whatever tools you have available. I just happen to have this uh, little metal punch that I use for a lot of things. So I used it and it worked great. Okay, so aluminum can, scissors, a little punch, a marker, and that was that's where we are. So then I started experimenting a little bit. I used um, I used embossing my embossing pad and used um, blue embossing powder, this color, and uh, clear embossing powder. And I got this result, which is kind of pretty, it's kind of model looking. Hi, Becky. I know it's been like five months or something since I got since I got on here. And now I was holding these with my pliers and I use my old pliers. And you can see at the top that it's not covered well. And that's because I just hadn't gone back and I was just testing. But I, you know, I grabbed it right at the point. Because it does get warm when you're using the heat gun to melt the embossing powder. It gets warm. But that's numerous layers numerous layers of embossing powder and I thought I had I have a lot of embossing powder and I thought I had some um, ultra thick um, where is that just had it ultra thick clear but I don't I have clear I have detail clear and I think I have ultra clear gold somewhere yeah, UD gold, UD gold, UD gold. So I got a lot of gold, but I don't have any clear. And and um, UD embossing powders are thick. You know, they, they're a lot thicker. So you can do things like this and build up a layer really fast. But this took several layers. I'm going to say, I don't know, two or three, three maybe. But I like the way it looks. It's kind of cool looking. It, all, it looks kind of like enamel. And that's what I'm going for. Hi. <laughs> Aunt Vic, I do the same thing all the time. 
It's either my glasses or my phone or the measuring tape or the ruler or something. It's always right there. So anyway, that's I like the way that one turned out. Now this one, I um, used a red, it's called Rich Red Embossing Powder. And you can see the, I, the um, images on the metal show through the embossing powder. And this took several coats also. And um, I think this was just the red embossing powder, not clear. This is just the red. So that's another way to do it. And then this one I was really experimenting on. I decided to try, I, I used to make little boxes and um, I would put um, acrylic paint on them and then heat it with a heat gun until it bubbled up and textured. And then, you know, do several layers of different things like that. And it worked really well. So I thought, oh, you know, I wonder if you could do that with a, a acrylic pen, paint pen. So that's what I did. I scribbled on this with this acrylic paint pen. And then I, and I wanted to be able to do it without using the embossing pad. So while it was still wet, I sprinkled on some um, clear embossing powder and heated it up. It worked. Um, and I think that's all I did on this side. So after, you know, I, I put a couple layers of clear on here over top of the pen. I think maybe after the first layer, it was sketchy enough to where I went back over it when it was, once it was cool, I went back over it with the pen and then did some more embossing. And then on this side, I did the same thing, but I, since I wanted to do something different. So on this side, I uh, used the green um, embossing powder and just kept layering it up. Now, watch what happens if I, see that's so thick on there that it cracked, it actually cracked. So you kind of have to, you know, watch what you're doing, not get it too thick in one place. That's why, because I've got it, it's really, really thick over here. And that whole thing will crack off of that aluminum. Look at that. But these, they're not quite as, they're a little bit more flexible because I didn't make it quite as thick. So that's something to watch for. All right. So anyway, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do one of these um, start to finish so you can see how it goes. It's not really complicated. It's just a matter of embossing the, the thing. And what I'm going to use is I like the way this one came out the best. So that was using colored embossing powder and clear embossing powder only. So we're going to, I'm not, that's what I'm going to try to do. And um, I'm going to try using this rust tapestry and maybe some gold. And here's another tapestry. It's very pretty. Okay, so here we go. And once again, this is all experimental. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> and of course, it's messy. So there's that. So, you know, I was trying to figure out a, the least messy way to do it. And um, I don't think there is a least messy way. I mean, it's messy no matter what you do. Okay, now let me see. I'm going to take one of these because I used the back of that one already. The, the thing I did decide with using the um, paint markers is that you could actually draw on there. If you wanted to now all of this you see right here that's just the can um, artwork coming through showing through but it's okay i don't mind it. it i mean you can't read it or anything but you could take different colors and actually draw on here and do it so that was that was a good experiment just to find out so going to start with the front I'm just laying this on here. I'm gonna just uh, boy, where's my a paintbrush here? Oh, here it is. So I'm just laying this on here and pressing it, you know, so that it can get some embossing fluid on it. And 
and then I can take it in my my pliers I'm just trying to grab you know what's happened I've got embossing powder on here and the pliers won't close all the way Let's see So I took a wild trip down Pinterest in my saved folders. What is the deal? Just to see what I'd saved, something different to try. And I saw these little books. They were enameled. So it, it wasn't embossed. They were enameled. But I thought that's where I got the idea from. I thought, oh, I wonder if I could use all these 20 million jars of embossing powder I have and make something with them. <laughs> and I have these little spoons in here. They're little ice cream sample spoons, but they, um, I broke the handles off. So there's one in each jar. And that way I don't have to go looking for a spoon all the time. I used to have these in bigger um, containers to where I could dip stuff in there and what have you. But, um, they just took up so much space that I emptied them out. And all, already I'm making a mess. So you know how it goes. It stuff gets everywhere. It's worse than glitter. Okay, so I have my heat gun. And it's going to be noisy for a second. So here we go. Well, this is still hot. We'll see if I can just add some more right quick without using any more stamp pad. Now this particular embossing powder doesn't get real shiny because it's uh, supposed to be like rust sort of. So it's kind of hard to tell when it's melted. But now at this point, if I wanted, I could put more embossing fluid on there and I will do that in a second. some more noise <laughs> So I don't want to, I'm going to try not to put in the clear on here so that it keeps the 
the rusty looking effect, I think. So you see, it takes a while to build up the layers. And then, of course, I want to do the back also. I keep losing the embossing powder. So let's start with it. This is looking pretty good. I like this. I forgot how much I like this particular embossing powder. I probably haven't used this stuff in over five years or so. And it's really old. Most of this embossing powder is over, whoops, over 20 years old. So it's still good. Just doesn't get used very much. get as thick a coat on here as I can, but it's not going to all stay on there. Ooh, a lot of it did. Hi, Marie. Thanks for coming. thing that happens is when I do the second side it he reheats the first side so I have to be careful with touching it because I don't want to mess up the first side ah get your hands in there Deborah <laughs> It's hard to tell when this is melted. Tell you back in the day when I used embossing powder a lot, I had a, um, a contractor type heat gun, like you'd just buy at Home Depot or whatever. And that thing, that was the best thing I ever had. This is a Darice heat tool. I don't think it's nearly as good as the contractor models. It just doesn't cut it as well. It works, but I liked my old one better back in the day, as I say. So now I'm going to do the top where I was holding. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to lay this aside and do the back as quickly as I can. And then I think I'm going to go back and put a little bit of gold on it because I think that would be pretty. Marie, you'd be surprised how many things I use that are over 20 years old. <laughs> I was curious as to how these little holes would um, hold up on here. And they actually, I don't know if you can whoops, see that, the holes stayed perfectly. They didn't fill in, so they look good. I don't know if you can hear it, but my dog is snoring. Probably can't hear her. She's being pretty quiet. <laughs> it's a little snore going on over there. That's hot. These pliers are hard to use because one 
end of it's broken. But I don't want to use good ones, so. any worse already all over doesn't have a spoon. All right, now, now I'm going to try to put a little bit of gold on the edges. So I'm just going to try one edge at a time, I guess. Let's see. I think, I think if I put this down here, then I can just stick that in there. Not really, it's not really making a big difference, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, so. You get the idea. I'm just embossing a medium coat, really, of embossing powder on the front and the back of the cut piece of uh, can, aluminum can. Now, I'm also going, I gotta wipe this up because it's gonna be a humongous mess if I don't. On and in everything. wipe up because this stuff has traveled all the way back here. So let me just wipe it a little bit. why I quit using embossing powder and glitter. I don't I don't use 
hardly ever use glitter anymore. I hate the mess that it makes. Look at all that. That's from end to end. All right. Now. Okay. make some uh, little signatures to go in the little book. Oh, I forgot to do that part, but I guess it'll, it'll be all right. And on this one, my hole's closed up, so let me see where they are, which side. Thanks, Marie. Just playing around. Yeah, I was so proud of the fact that the holes didn't close up, and these really did. <sighs> okay. It's just a fine. No big deal. Got a big, big enough for the jump rings to fit through. So there. Okay. Yeah, and see that's not cracking off at all because I didn't make it real, real thick. All right. Now we need paper. Paper, paper, paper. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to use just some white paper just to make it easy. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it with my cutter to make it easy. <laughs> and these I think are an inch and a half. Yes, so I'm going to make it I think I'll just make it an inch and a half. So that's three inches. So I need three inches wide two and a half inches tall. And then I'll have to cut the top to make it look like the roof. Hi, Flo. How you doing, Andrea? Nice to see you here. I didn't advertise this morning. I just jumped on. I'm going to make these just a t like two and seven eighths instead of three. I must need a new um, blade on this thing. Really cut and ragged. making little books. Oh, thanks, Aunt Vic. I want to make
make it too thick because it has to fit in the jump ring. I have some, see which size works the best. Okay. So I'll fold these up. This is all kind of trial and error. I just thought it'd be fun to do something different. And I had one piece of tin can left over from when I did the embossed frames. So I thought, why not? Now, the deal here is going to be punching the holes nicely. And so I guess I can mark it. If I can find my pencil, I'll use a pen, it's sharper. Go through these little bitty holes. Take some clips. I don't know how I don't know how many pieces of paper this little punch will punch through, or if it will reach. How far will it reach? Oh, so close. This is the best little hole punch. I mean, it's a metal, it's for jewelry, it's used for jewelry and it's to punch holes in metal for rivets and things. But I've used it a lot for paper. I used to use it to punch holes around tags so I could crochet them. But now I have a different tool that I use for that. Let's see, it's not gonna reach either way. If I cut this, it will. I got one of those, I don't even know what it's called. Um, it's actually meant to use with um, making journals, I, I believe. And it, uh, it's like a punching cradle type thing. But it really works great to punch around things to crochet. Okay, that worked great. Pull this back and trim this. Still have to punch the other holes. I wonder if I could do this. Hold this long enough. Yep. Yay. Now, like I said before, you could use a um, awl to do this with. I think um, I think the big punchers would be the hole is still even though it has a smaller hole it's still kind of big for something this small. 
So I think it, it would work better to use an awl or a little punch like this. Okay, there's that. Now I'm going to trim this in so everything's a little bit more neat. Can't do it with those. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, now see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm patient enough to go through all that embossing. <laughs> but I do have several more to do. I've got, let's see, what have I got? I've got three, four, three or four. Now, I think I'm going to have to use these jump rings. Four. And I need my pliers. Pliers. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this goes. I'm gonna go. Oh, that hole's big enough. Uh, I'm going to repunch this hole because it's, even though the hole's there, I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. If I could see better, things would be a lot easier. Oh my gosh, I can't. It's getting bad. Got to make a doctor eye appointment. Might do that next week. All right, let's try this again. I have to use a smaller ring. Oh. The other day I was making um, glue bottle dangles. I'm telling you, it was so frustrating. I dropped everything. I mean everything that went in my hand, I dropped. It's ridiculous. So what's wrong with me? But got the dropsies. I can see one thing that could be a problem because this metal's so thin you get too close to the edge, it's not going to hold up very well when the holes are punched, I mean. But, you know, you could fold the edge over so it's double. That would work or something like that. I'm afraid it's not going to be strong enough. Probably should have used brass um, rings. But these will be all right. To 
open it pretty wide to um, get it to work where I can maneuver. Come on, little guy, get in that hole. You know, whenever you work with little things, it's always fiddly. Fiddly, fiddly. But if you keep at it, you'll get there. Come on, babe. Since I've opened it so far, it's like a curly cue, and I just got to get it moving in the right direction. Maybe. <laughs> Andrea. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Some days that's what I do. <laughs> isn't big enough. Don't break. There. It's right there. Just didn't want to pop through. There it goes. It's about as bad as my earlobes. <clears throat> I'm getting where I can't even get my earrings in anymore. It's looking cute. Look how cute it's looking. Okay, two more. So those of you who um, were in Ann's chat room yesterday, before I left, I was talking about my husband and my brother-in-law going to the park to ride the side-by-side -side through the trails and stuff. And they turned, the, turned it on its side. Well, my, my um, brother-in-law is the one who called and told me about it and he was just laughing his head off because he thought it was so funny well it would be funny except he recently got a pacemaker installed and he still can't he's at the point where he still can't isn't supposed to raise his arm or get his arm behind his back and blah 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 so I almost freaked out when he told me thinking that oh my gosh you know they are so stupid why are they out there doing that when he's got the deal with his pacemaker going on but apparently they just had a big time so i didn't say anything to my husband when he came in he was kind of quiet and he just came on downstairs where i was and walked on over to his workshop to work on his stuff and he got almost over there and i said well did y'all have a good time because i wanted to see what he would say he says, yeah, it was fun. That's all he said. He didn't say anything about turning the side by side over on its side or anything. So I didn't say anything. So when we went upstairs later, I said, well, you said you had a good time. How hard was it to turn the, <laughs> to turn the vehicle back over? He says, oh, it wasn't that bad. He said, we just were in a little ditch and it was sitting sideways and blah, blah, blah. 
I said, Ricky was laughing so hard he could hardly tell me what happened. He said, well, it was pretty funny. I couldn't stand to wait any longer. I wanted to hear what he had to say, so I brought it up myself. <laughs> Well, this one's going to be stubborn. There. This is really very cute. I'm not sure I'm happy with the um, embossing part. I don't really like the way that looks either. I need to put something behind there and put some newsprint or something. <clears throat> We're still here. We're still here. At least I am. I don't know how who else is. <sighs> Me and Flo, we're here. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got something in my throat now. Froggy throat, throat, froggy throat. I like it. <clears throat> I kind of wish I had cut that paper. Probably would have laid better. See right here. Or is that the hole? Nope. Right here I must have... Um, I hit it with something, probably the pliers or something, and it scraped a spot right there. So the can showing through. But it's a cute idea. It just needs a little bit more experimentation. I think it would be cute done with a piece of leather. A little house with a piece of leather. I definitely like the, the way the... Um, uh, jump rings look. Isn't that cute? 
but it needs a little bit more experimentation on the embossing part. I'm not crazy about how it came out. I mean, it's, it's okay, but I think maybe if the um, aluminum can was sanded, the surface was sanded, and um, I don't know how it would work if you put, uh, hmm. well, I'll think of what it is in a minute, the white stuff, you know, that you put on first under paint. If you sanded it and then put that on and then did the embossing, it might would work. Although it also might would bubble the base, the white. Um, what is that stuff called? I can't even think of it. Hi, Donna. Dana. Oh, I do that every time, don't I? I try to call you Donna. I don't know why. I don't even know anyone named Donna. So anyway, that was kind of fun. Makes a cute little book. And you could hang it, you could hang it from a journal. You could really use about anything. You could use heavy cardstock. Might even work better. Might would work better. Maybe I should try that. Do I want to try that? See how that works. I have to get all this other stuff out again, don't I? <laughs> but that's okay. It's right here. I think I'm going to try it. What do you think? Is it worth it? Gesso. Yes. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Huh. Gesso. Thank you so much. I'm going to get a, actually, this is, um, yeah, this is a um, watercolor paper. Maybe that'll work good because it's pretty thick. Oh, one thing I didn't say. If you decide to cut um, for whatever you're using it for, if you decide to cut tin cans, aluminum cans, aluminum cans, make sure that when you're done, you clean up very carefully because if you just wipe your hand across something where you've been cutting aluminum, there could be tiny little slivers and it will hurt. Believe me, it will hurt. I've done it before. All right, so I'm going to take a piece of this and try it. Let's see, where am I? Here? I'm going to make it about the same size. It was one and a half by three. I might like this better. I'm not going to gesso it. I'm just going to go straight to the paper. What did I do with my pencil? This was here. There it is. Just cutting some pieces out for a 
this one I want to be to have a chimney chimney have a chimney I have a little stencil over here that has some little boxes, so I'm going to use that to make some windows. have to leave room for the holes and we need a door which I think will be this tall that looks too wide so I'll make it skinnier Of course, I can't cut the whole bottom out because then it will fall apart. So we'll just make a little, what do you call that? A door jam right there. Okay. So there's a smaller one. 24 hour stream for people with under you should join. Oh, hmm. I might check that out. Although, who knows when I can do it. So, now, make this one with chimney. The chimney. Oh, it's shorter. I measured it. Hmm. Angie Brown, thanks for coming. Okay, so that'll leave enough room for the For the whatever I'm thinking, for the holes is what I'm trying to say. So when is it going to occur, Ann? I got these scalpels thinking they were going to be a good purchase because I like thin blades and the ones that I usually use are getting harder and harder to find and they're expensive. So I thought I'd try these because a friend of mine gave me a scalpel, a retractable scalpel and I really like it, so I got these, thinking maybe that would be a good idea. Well, they cut fine, but they're not, 
they bend too much. See how much, can you see how much that bends? I don't want them to bend that much. I want this part to be nice and solid and not bend because it's hard to cut straight um, precise lines when it bends. So that looks pretty cute. I'm gonna do that. Okay, so here's one, where'd it go? Here's one. I think I'm just gonna copy that onto here. And I've lost my pencil again, here it is. <clears throat> This one will be a little taller than the other one. And this is basically the same way I did the metal. You know, I just drew the lines on there and then cut it out. I feel like I'm pretty quiet today, just kind of relaxing, enjoying the process. It'll get noisy here in a minute when I turn that heat gun back on. Oh, the same wobble so much. Which I think could be dangerous. Now, let's emboss these and see what happens. Just for kicks. Just for kicks. It's the only way I can get my kicks because I can't kick anymore. So it's like I can't kick my heels up like I used to be able to. <laughs> okay. Um, what color do we want these? Uh, well, we got blue, red, gold, green, black. Uh, 
bronze. We're gonna try the topiary tapestry. It's a green with some gold in it or something. Yeah, a little bit of gold. <clears throat> Excuse me, I can't get this out of my throat. <clears throat> get this heat gun back over here. Got the embossing pad, got some lightweight watercolor paper, and I'm going to hit it with this. I find my crummy tweezers or pliers. that no spoon in that one either must have ran out of spoons at some point <clears throat> I have a feeling this is gonna look better won't be the same as using metal but I think the embossing powder will adhere better. And yeah, I'm making some little books. Basically. The first ones were made out of metal. And this now I'm trying it on paper with embossing powder. I want it to look kind of like a... Um, enamel whoa that didn't even stick look at that well that's a tragedy hmm See if I can clean this off. Well, why didn't you tell me that before? I did that. <laughs> nope, 
guess that'll have to do because that's all that's coming off right now. And what I want to know is why didn't that maybe I just didn't heat it long enough because you know the metal heats faster, gets hot faster, so maybe I just didn't heat it long enough and it just didn't stick, it didn't melt. That's what I'm guessing. That's what I'm guessing. Try again. It's melting. Couldn't even tell. Dare I try this again? Let's see. You just have to try things until they work or give up, one or the other. <laughs> it just depends on what mood you're in. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming by, Andrea. You're always welcome. This is actually pretty nice uh, embossing powder. It has a really cool texture. This is called Topiary Tapestry. Tapestry. I do not know who it's made by. Those jars disappeared a long, long time ago. And like I said, some of this is probably 20 years old. So I guess that it's working at all is pretty impressive. Oh, I didn't poke holes in these. 
That's okay, I can do it. So that worked pretty well. Kind of like that. I think it looks it, it looks neater than on the metal, and I think it'll stay on there better. I don't think it'll come off of, of the paper. But I kind of wanted the idea of the metal. But this would be cute also. I left it a little mottled looking. So, so I'm not going to torture you with more um, heat gun noises. I just wanted to jump on for a little bit and try this experiment, see how it turned out. That's kind of what I had on my mind this morning. And I will do these later because I think they're very cute. So there's that one. Here's the one I, I finished. Might would have been cute to put black behind the windows and the door too. But it makes a cute little book. Opens out flat. Can definitely do some stuff in there. I do think this would be cute, and I'm, I'm going to try making some leather ones, I think. I think it would be real cute in leather with the rings. Well, thanks, Angie. That's my doodling music, Ann. Doodly do. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for doodly do. <laughs> Dogs have already been up, ate their breakfast, went outside and played, and now they're crashed again.
I can't even see that. Let me see if I can find anything. <laughs> nope, I can't. I don't have it open yet. You're humming along. <laughs> Gotta get some checkerboards on here. Well, I know you can't see that. I'm going to fix that. Hopefully, I don't knock it out. can try but things don't always work the way you want them to when you want them to so uh, hmm. I can't see it Look at that. What a difference that made. Okay, that works. Whatever works, that's what I'm all for. <laughs> all right, here we go. Back to the doodling. And you're always harvesting magazines. You need a harvesting magazine song. Cut and paste, cut and paste. Grabbed a handful of markers. I'll see what we're going to do with these colors. I'm going to color. Well, this was probably a mistake because I can barely see what I'm doing. <laughs> My own self. These markers aren't good on copy paper either. They bleed. But you get the idea, you cute little book. It's mostly mostly successful. Successful enough to try to make a few more. Maybe a little bit different techniques. So, with all that said, the harvesting will go. The harvesting will go. <laughs> I guess that's all I have for today. Mostly successful. Definitely love the way the little rings look. The size. I think I like this size a little better. I like the chimney on there. So, very cute idea that could be taken a lot of different directions. Yeah, that would be cute, Ann. But next time, I think instead of folding it, I'm just going to cut them and it will lay flatter. Because that doesn't lay very flat. Of course, it's pretty fat for this, but I don't think. 
If it was much bigger than that, it would probably be too big for these rings. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you all for coming by on such short notice, and thanks for putting up with the racket. And um, hope to see you again soon. Be nice to yourself and be nice to someone else. And I'll see you. Bye.